everybody, welcome to Nicole Sauce's Thought of the Walk, episode 51. I believe I've got my fancy mic all in order. I'll listen to the audio on this before uploading the video. You may notice I'm not walking today. Today, I'm doing something very important for my personal independence, and that is that I'm taking a 14-hour drive up to Kansas, doing some things with the roaster, and taking a 14-hour drive back. That means over the next three days, I'll do at least 28 hours of driving. Today's usually my selfish Sunday. Selfish Sunday is a concept I threw out there. Uh, you need to have a day where you strike a balance and you get to do what you want and do something to recharge. And it could be anything from, I'm gonna reorganize my closet because that makes me feel good, to I like to get up and have a peaceful cup of coffee, take my dogs for a walk, do some projects in the morning and then I leave and go swim laps because for me to swim laps is a 45 to one hour drive to a lap pool and then I spend an hour in the pool and then I come back home. So it's about a three hour round trip. That's not something that I have built into my week on a regular basis but swimming laps for me because I used to be a competitive swimmer is it's both therapeutic from a physical standpoint like my body gets all stretched out and that shoulder rotator cuff thing I have gets worked out in the pool but it's also mentally like meditative because all I think about when I'm in this pool is form in the water to optimize how fast I go forward based on the motions I make as well as the number of lengths left that I'm swimming in whatever set I'm doing as part of my workout. So it is, it's both meditative and physically it resets my body for the next week. And when I miss swimming, life is tough, right? But sometimes selfish Sundays don't happen for me. And it's funny because we went into this year with a word of the year and my, my chosen word was balance. And the reason I chose that word is last year I chose grow. And for the first half of the year or so, like I chose grow, I got ridiculously sick in um, February. And then uh, we had tornadoes hit and it knocked out, like in my community, it was horrible. People were ripped out of their houses and their bodies hurled and they were killed as part of this process. A lot of people ended up in the hospital, entire homes were lifted up off their foundations and moved. Well, as a result of this, we lost power and communications for a day and the power for a little bit longer. Communications were out for a day. And there was a lot of work to do to make up for that. And then COVID shutdowns happened. And my reaction to that was to double down on basic homesteading skills, pantry management, strategies for making money if you if your work is not letting you work how do you make money what are some side hustles you can do when you know life is shut down for so many people and what that means is that well I worked really hard and what I found happened with my finances last year for the first half of the year is they went down and you know, it would be real easy in 2020 to say as an excuse, well, COVID, so no money. But around about June, we had our spring workshop and ended up with something really awesome happening where we all kind of turned a corner on 2020 at that workshop. And it was a quiet turn. It wasn't the usual, holy cow, big epiphany moment. This is how my life is going to be better quietly turned a corner and from that point forward the realization that all of this adversity had to happen for me to, to face what everybody faces when they start a business or strike out on the kind of lifestyle I live or kind of lifestyle you want to build which increase you know includes increased independence and the ability to take care of yourself and generate your revenue and that sort of thing we, I realized that in every business I've ever been involved with, in every business I've ever started, there's a decision you make to poop or get off the pot. You gotta poop or get off the pot. And that means it's time to work hard and it, no excuses. No, 2020 is no excuse. 2020 
is no excuse for failure. And I realized that, I did a podcast on it, and I talked about turning the corner. And you know what? From that moment forward, I grew, I grew, I grew. Revenue grew, lots of things grew. The podcast grew, everything grew. And I made it to the end of the year better off than I had been the year before, despite all the adversity. And that meant that we grew. And I almost did grow for a second year as my word of the year because it was so successful and I finally figured it out. But here's the thing. As I went into 2021, I realized I grew, I worked really hard, I, I and I need to have a balance in my life where I have time for my animals, for my friends, for my family, for myself, for my business, right? I need to have time for all of those things. And the only way you have time for those things is you make time for those. You make time for your health. And so I decided I do want to keep growing. It's necessary for me to keep growing, to take care of myself and to take care of the Living Free in Tennessee community, right? But balance is important too. And if I build my company with only growth in mind and not balance, then I will end up with exactly what I've set out to do, a company that's growing, 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 but at the sacrifice of some things that are very important to me and so I chose the word balance and for the first gosh eight months for sure of this year maybe seven maybe eight if anybody anybody who knows me personally knows I have been burning the candle at all three ends the middle and both outer ends to get stuff done and to grow I've been burning that candle so hard. I have sacrificed my health. I have made time for things as part of balance, but balance is about the furthest thing from my life. And that means that I've not achieved the word. But we also know when you choose a word of the year, what often happens is the opposite of that word, right? You end up with a, basically the opposite experience of what the word's supposed to bring you, right? And when that happens, you end up with some really killer stuff happening where it's painful. Every year when I develop as a person and get better at things, there's also a lot of pain. And because of that, what I experienced for the first seven months at least of the year was the opposite of balance and that's been hard, but in that opposite experience, I have started to find what I need to do for balance. And what I need to do for balance is make time for priorities and improve my ability to get things done with less time while still keeping that quality. Well, here's the deal. Part of that decision for me to be able to do that in the coffee roasting business is to produce even more coffee per roast without going over the top and sacrificing quality. Without sacrificing quality. And so today, what's happening is I have given up my my selfish Sunday, which is supposed to be all about me, to drive nine hours to go stay at a friend's house so that tomorrow I can get up and drive five more hours and go take the coffee roaster, which is behind me in the car. You probably can't see. There's like pieces of it sticking up. Take it to the manufacturer and get it updated. And when I come back, my roaster will roast more per roast. And that means that I can spend less time in the roastery fulfilling orders. I've added a a helper who helps me fulfill orders sometimes. And all of that is taking back some balance in my life while maintaining the quality of what I want to do. And I think it's important to realize sometimes you've just got to put the work in. I'm going to drive at least 28 hours in the next 72 hours. Those are going to be in the car. I'm going to do it on days when I wasn't, but I'd much rather be doing homesteading stuff. I pre-recorded yesterday my podcast for tomorrow because uh, I want to keep the content coming to y'all. So I gave up a weekend so that I can come back and save time in the long run. And the reason I made that decision 
with the frame of I want to keep myself balanced is long-term balance will happen and if I get this done before coffee roasting like Christmas coffee roasting season I'm gonna be in a much better place and guys I'm looking at my fall and the other thing that happened this year is that my podcast got popular enough that I went from you know kind of this personality who occasionally goes out and does stuff to people ask me to speak at their events on the regular basis and I have speaking engagements every month through the fall multiple ones per month and that's both good for for our network growth and for outreach and it's good for the podcast and I get to teach people about cool things like building a community of doers putting together a purposeful living neighborhood um, how to do proper pantry management and what that looks like on a homestead like I'm doing all sorts of really cool presentations this year teaching people so that more people are empowered to stand on their own two feet and to go out and get stuff done and to make their lives the best it can be no matter what the situation in the world if I'm gonna do that well this trip is super important and I just wanted to share that thought with you today because sometimes it is about sacrificing your me time or your downtime for a long-term benefit that brings you forward spiritually, that brings you forward from a balanced standpoint, and that also makes your finances better. With that, I'll be back on Tuesday with another Thought of the Walk from the Car. Make it a great week.